Ready for some obscure yet oh-so-helpful tips for your next Disney World vacation? Then you've come to the right place, my friends. So sit back, relax, and get ready to say, huh, I never thought of that before. Hey everybody, it's AJ for Disney Food Blog. The team and I give you a lot, and I mean a lot of Disney tips on this channel, but today I'm coming at you with even more. Some of these tips might have been briefly mentioned before, some of them might come at you all shiny and new. Whatever the case may be, hopefully they'll help you as you start packing and planning for that upcoming trip. Before we get started on this list though, keep in mind that these are only a handful of the super, super helpful tips the team and I conjure up on the daily. We got a whole DFB guidebook available for purchase featuring hundreds upon hundreds of pages filled with important reviews and recommendations, so make sure to check that out over at DFB Store. Dot com, and you can also visit our DFB website for the latest Disney announcements and breaking news stories. Number one, you only need one annual pass to score perks and discounts. So you don't have to actually spend, you know, $2,000 to get an annual pass for everyone in your party. Only one person, mom, dad, needs to have an annual pass and you can get the discounts and benefits for everybody in your family. The most important benefit, of course, are those hotel discounts. That can save you hundreds, if not thousands of dollars, depending on how often you travel to Disney World and what hotels you stay in. So as an annual pass holder, you're able to access annual pass holder discounts, which are pretty much year round, and you will definitely want to do that. That's going to be the biggest benefit for you. You'll also get 10% discounts at most restaurants around property, 10 to 20% off select entertainment options, and 10 to 15% off a lot of resort recreational activities. And you can also get 20% off at select merchandise locations. Also, if your family wants to use PhotoPass, annual pass holders can choose to include that option as an add-on for $99. For guests using standard park tickets, the PhotoPass edition usually runs $169 to $199 depending on when you buy it. So take advantage of the annual pass holder discount here too. Annual pass holders also don't have to pay to park on the daily. Before you drive under the archway for any of the parks, show a cast member in the parking ticket booth your annual pass and everyone in your vehicle will be good to go without having to pay for parking at a theme park. So all of those benefits, plus potentially others, if they start to return, those will be huge benefits your whole family can take advantage of, and you don't have to get an annual pass for everyone in the family. Our second tip is also for pass holders. You should purchase drinks and snacks at merchandise locations. So let's review what I said in the previous point. Most dining locations, whether it be table service or quick service, will give Disney annual pass holders a 10% discount. Most merchandise locations, however, will give you a 20% discount at their shops. So a variety of gift shops will offer up standard Disney snacks like bite-sized pretzels, Mickey cheese crackers, chocolate dip rice crispy treats, and a selection of other goodies. The gift shops at hotels will also have access to refrigerated sections that'll have water, sodas, numerous select beverage options available. If you're an annual pass holder, or if you have an annual pass holder in your travel party and you're looking for quick snacks or beverages, you'll save money by grabbing these pick-me-ups at merchandise locations rather than quick service locations. A 20% discount instead of 10%? Take that deal, friends. And don't forget, you can also get discounts at merchandise locations that double as candy stores, basically. So Caramel Kucha in Germany, that's technically a merchandise location. So yeah, you can get that 20% discount on all the eats you buy there. All right, now, you know you can get iconic Disney World snacks at home. You don't have to wait until you go to Disney to get those famous Disney park snacks. You can get them right in your own backyard a lot of the time. One of the most famous instances of this is the Mickey Premium Bar, which released to grocery store shelves back in 2019. The Premium Bars come in a box of six and usually range between seven and eight dollars, which is not too shabby considering a single Mickey Premium Bar in the parks is around six dollars. Note that these are a little bit smaller than the regular Mickey Premium Bars, but still a decent deal. You can also find Mickey cookies and cream ice cream sandwiches for the same amount, a box of six and the same price range around seven to eight dollars and the team and i have also noticed dole whips pop up at random amusement parks side kiosks and frozen treat locations around the country so you never know when that pineapple frozen goodness is going to bump into you outside of the disney parks dole whips have appeared in frozen chain yogurt shops too like menchie's sweet frog and yogurtini so just keep your eyes peeled for those rotating flavors you never know when dole whips going to show up 
On a more obscure note, if you're a big fan of the mini mango pies offered at the Yak and Yeti restaurant, Disney's Animal Kingdom, you can find a very similar, if not practically identical, mango pie dessert at select grocery stores like Kroger and Publix. This is actually the very pie they use at Yak and Yeti. I've actually researched this. And it's got that buttery and crumbly kind of graham cracker cookie crust and the creamy mango sweet yet tart center. It's even the same size. So if you're looking for your mini mango pie fix, it's probably in your grocery store. They're called Kenny's Pies. So that's what you're going to want to look for as far as a logo. Looking for other Mickey-inspired foods and treats to get your park fix? The DFB website has a whole list of different Disney snacks that you can purchase right now. I'll link the list in the description below. Next up, Disney won't automatically apply discounts to your bookings. This is very, very sneaky of them and it can end up being a huge slip up if you're not careful. I can remember learning this a bajillion years ago and I was like, well, that's not very nice, but knowing is half the battle. So even if Disney World is promoting a certain hotel room, theme park ticket, or vacation package discount, that doesn't mean they're gonna automatically add said discounts to your current bookings. Here at DFB, the team and I love updating y'all about the latest deals and discounts we find on the Disney World website. We'll even send those deals directly to your email if you sign up for our newsletter. However, you have to take the initiative to actually get those discounts applied to your vacation bill if you've already locked in your travel plans. If you found an awesome deal on the special offers page of the Disney World website and you've already booked your Disney vacation, just call Disney's number 407-939-4357 to get in touch with a reservation agent cast member. You're going to need to provide any and all info that'll verify your most recent Disney World booking, but after everything checks out, you can ask the cast member about the deal you found online. They'll double check and make sure the vacation fits the requirements needed to secure the discount. Once everything checks out, the cast member can proceed with adding that discount onto your vacation if it's still available. Word of warning here though, the Disney World phone lines can get pretty busy, so if you want to try making these modifications yourself, you can try doing that through the My Disney Experience app or through the Walt Disney World website. Just tap on the My Reservations link, then tap on the reservation you're wanting to change. The change reservation option should appear for you. Now, technology can be finicky, so you may end up having to just call, or you can have a travel agent do all this fun stuff for you. Travel agencies like Small World Vacations, who we always recommend, will help you find the best deals for your trip free of cost, and will be on the lookout to apply discounts when they come out after you've booked. So if all this planning seems like a lot of work for your relaxing vacation, you may wanna consider looking into Small World Vacations to help you out. Now, did you know you can go to Disney's 50th anniversary on Disney's 51st anniversary? If you've been keeping up with the DFB channel and website, then you know all about the different happenings going on for Disney World's 50th anniversary. And if you're keeping up with all the new releases from back home hundreds of miles away from the parks, then you might be coming down with a case of FOMO, fear of missing out. Even if you can't go to Disney World's 50th anniversary celebrations yet, that doesn't mean you have to miss out completely. The 50th anniversary will be happening for the next 18 months, meaning if you want to celebrate on an actual Disney anniversary but weren't able to this year, you can always aim for October 1st, 2022. The last day of the 50th anniversary festivities is March 31st, 2023, so you still have plenty of time to plan your vacation and join in on all the fun in person. All that merchandise is going to be there, all those treats are going to be there, and the great thing is there's a bunch they haven't even released yet. We're still waiting for a bunch of merchandise that's not even on the shelves and a couple of really huge deal rides that have not opened in our nowhere close to opening, honestly. Tron, Guardians of the Galaxy, we're not gonna see those guys till at least next year. So waiting until next October might make the most sense, eh? Okay, our next important tip you've never heard, value resorts can be misleading. Don't let the name value fool you when it comes to Disney's least expensive hotels. Even though these hotels are the more affordable option on Disney World property, that doesn't necessarily mean you won't end up still paying an arm and a leg for your stay, and there may be better options. If you decide to stay at a family suite at Art of Animation, those rooms are still gonna cost you a pretty penny. For example, if you were to book a suite around spring break at Disney's Art of Animation Hotel, expect to pay around $563 per night for the Lion King or Cars suite and $609 per night for the Finding Nemo suite because it's closer to the pool. Those numbers add up fast, especially when you're only using the area to sleep and not have the extra amenities like the other moderate and deluxe resorts have. If you're looking for a more affordable stay for your travel party of five or more, or just a travel party that's looking for more space in general, then consider checking into the cabins at Disney's Fort Wilderness Resort. If you're gonna book one of these cabins around the same time, around spring break, you can expect to pay around $5.25 per night. And those cabins sleep up to six adults and include a full kitchen and living room space. 
It's a pretty decent deal. Now, just be warned, Fort Wilderness is pretty far away from just about everything on property. When you're at Art of Animation, you're paying for convenience and a colorful cast of characters from your favorite Disney animated films. You've got the Skyliner right there, which takes you very quickly to two parks. Being at Fort Wilderness, you sort of have to do buses and boats, and it can take a long time to get places. So if your heart is still set on a suite at Art of Animation, keep checking the Disney website for discounts. I can also send you discount updates as I find them directly to your email if you sign up for the DFB newsletter. Just saying. Or you can plan on vacationing during Disney's off seasons like January and February, September, times like that. Prices for hotel rooms should reduce around those times and make your stay more value than those peak crowd travel times. All right, I love this tip. Nobody ever talks about it. Here we go. The vertical pilot on Smuggler's Run uses inverted controls. You're like, AJ, what are you talking about? Okay, there are three different roles you can be assigned on Millennium Falcon Smuggler's Run, which is, of course, over at Galaxy's Edge and Hollywood Studios. This is important. If you are going to ride this ride, if you've got a bunch of people with you who are going to ride this ride, this is going to make you sound really smart. Okay, so there's different roles you can be assigned over there. Engineer, gunner, and the pilot position, which everybody wants. Now, each role is available for two guests, meaning you're going to have two engineers, two gunners, and two pilots in your cockpit. Now, unlike the engineers and gunners, where both positions are accomplishing the same task, each pilot has a slightly different task to undertake. The pilot on the left is going to be controlling the Falcon's left and right movements, while the pilot on the right will be controlling the Falcon's up and down movements and also shooting your team into hyperspace when needed. If you're the vertical pilot on Smuggler's Run, it's important to remember that the controls use inverted steering, meaning you'll have to pull back to go up and pull up to go down. These inverse directions might not be confusing for guests who are used to similar controls in their video games back home, but this can trip up some of the younger pilots. And after all, shouldn't going up equal up, right? Now this confusion can lead to a rocky run through of the ride for your little ones. So consider getting younger ones to be the horizontal pilot instead. It makes a lot more sense. The horizontal directions are very straightforward. Left goes left, right goes right. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. But if your little pilot is the right pilot, the vertical pilot, let them know how to do that. All right, our next tip, two locations in Disney World serve boba tea. That's right. We're Disney Food Blog. We are going to let you know where to find your favorite boba tea. The first location is in Disney Springs over at the Yasaki Kiosk. Along with their street food and poke bowl quick service options, you can also order boba teas. There are three different milk bases you can choose from, Hokkaido Black Milk, Strawberry Milk, or Taro Milk. And the second boba tea location is over in Epcot at the Joy of Tea Kiosk at the China Pavilion. You got three different boba options over here as well. The first option is the bubble milk tea, an iced and sweetened peach black tea with boba pearls. The second option is a honey hibiscus iced tea, a lightly sweetened iced tea with blueberry boba. And the third option is honey hibiscus iced tea spiked with a light rum. Now that's a party. If you're looking for the bursting boba and not so much the black tapioca balls, then you don't have to look very far. There are lots of specialty drinks, both alcoholic and non-alcoholic, that contain those popping pearls. Yasaki has a popping Yuza lemonade, which comes with your choice of strawberry, mango, or blueberry popping boba pearls, or you can pick up a drink at the Pongu Pongu Quick Service location in Pandora. The Night Blossom is a frozen concoction of lime, apple, and desert pear flavors topped with passion fruit bursting boba. That one's non-alcoholic. Or if you're looking for a good margarita boba mixture, you can order the frozen Moara margarita. The Moara margarita is made with tequila, blue curacao, because Disney loves their blue curacao, lime juice, and passion fruit boba balls. And many Epcot Festival booths featuring specialty drinks might also contain the bursting boba pearls for an added bit of fun and a splash of tart flavor. Drinks with bursting boba that the team and I have seen in the past are the Rain Boba from Festival of the Arts Deconstructed Dish Booth and the Mango Green Tea with Popping Bubbles at the China Kiosk in previous food and wine festivals. At this year's food and wine festival, you can actually order a mango bubble tea from the China Kiosk, which is very similar to the bubble milk tea at the Joy of Tea, but features mango instead of peach tea. Does the word tea sound weird to you? Here now, TTT. Yeah, it does. Next on our list, you can pay for individual pictures on your PhotoPass account. When Disney pitches the Memory Maker option as an add-on to your ticket, they're showing you how to receive all the PhotoPass pictures from your trip, which depending on when you purchase your Memory Maker, can be an extra $169 to $199 on top of everything else you're paying for. What Disney doesn't highlight as much is the fact that you don't have to pay for the entire package of photos if you don't want to. If there's only one super special picture you had taken during your trip that you want to purchase and the rest only came out okay, then you can just purchase the one picture and not have to purchase the others. 
To get a single picture on your My Disney Experience app, you can tap on the photo you're wanting to order. You should see the option of being able to download only that single photo, and if you're having trouble finding that option, try accessing the option on the Photo Pass section of the Disney website instead. Two 4x6 prints or one 5x7 is going to cost around $18.95, minus shipping and handling charges, and digital downloads will always cost around the same amount. So that's a huge discount to $199 if you don't want every single photo. Another great tip, Disney World has a new virtual healthcare service. Now, this is going to be super, super helpful, I think, to a lot of people who don't even realize they're going to need this service. So thanks to Advent Health and Disney World's partnership, guests now have access to virtual healthcare services while on vacation. You can access the service by searching for Advent Health on the My Disney Experience app. From there, you'll be led to an option called Guest Healthcare Services presented by Advent Health. Then you'll either be directed to the Advent Health app if it's already downloaded on your phone, or you'll be prompted to download the app so you can have access to these new features. So what will this link be able to do for you? First off, if you're feeling under the weather on Disney property, you'll be able to meet with a doctor or nurse practitioner without having to make an in-person appointment. These services are offered 24 seven. So even if you're up in the middle of the night with something that feels off, you can reach out to these medical specialists through the app. These appointments are $59, but some insurances will cover the cost. So make sure to check with your provider ahead of time. These specialists will be able to diagnose any minor ailments and prescribed treatments as needed. Any prescriptions that these specialists may recommend can be delivered to a nearby pharmacy or even to your Disney hotel room, which is super convenient. Now, if you know you're gonna need certain medical equipment for you or one of your travel party members, you can rent medical equipment for your Disney World stay too, like crutches, hospital beds, front wheel walkers, and numerous other offerings. You can see the full list on the Advent Health app. You will need to call the Advent Health Experience Center before your trip though, so you can have all the details chiseled out ahead of time. If you're feeling overwhelmed and you're not quite sure where to go with your medical concerns, Advent Health can help direct you through their care concierge service. If you reach out to Advent Health through the Disney World website, the care concierge team will be able to walk you through any question you may have about virtual doctors doctor's appointments. Just remember, if you have a major medical emergency, do not try to schedule an appointment with Advent Health. Instead, travel to a local hospital, call 911 immediately. Advent Health is meant for minor health concerns and medical equipment rentals. If you need emergency services, call the front desk or call 911. Okay, next great tip that you've never heard. Your resort can hold your luggage after you've checked out. Hypothetical scenario here. Let's say you're supposed to check out of your Disney hotel room by 11 a.m., but your Magical Express isn't coming to pick you up and take you to Orlando International Airport until 5. Does that mean you have to carry around your luggage all day long? No way. If you run into this situation, just call the front desk of your resort. Tell them that you need your luggage stored until your bus arrives that evening. This happens to guests all the time, so the front desk will be more than happy to keep it safe for you while you spend your last few hours soaking in the Disney magic. And if your hotel room is away away from the lobby, a cast member can come by your room and take your luggage to the front for you. Your resort can also transport your luggage for you if you're doing a split stay. So if you start the beginning of your trip at, say, Disney's Art of Animation and decide to finish it with a bang over at Grand Floridian, then the front desk at the Art of Animation will be more than happy to transfer your luggage over to your next hotel on property so you don't have to haul it yourself. Now, the best Skyliner gondolas with the best views are the next naked ones. Scandalous, right? But it's true. When the Disney Skyliners took their flight in September 2019, I remember thinking, oh, some of them don't have the cute little Disney character wraps on them. That's sad. But as it turns out, these are the best gondolas to ride. When there's a character design on your Skyliner gondola, your view is partially blocked. So the ones without the character designs give you a clear view of what you're flying over. There's really no strategy for getting a character or non-character gondola. The next one that appears on the route for you is the one you're gonna hop on. It'd be kind of silly to hold back and wait for just the right gondola when all it's doing is getting you from point A to point B, but it is nice to know there are benefits to both gondola decorations. One's gonna give you a nice clear view and one is gonna make your kiddos excited to be riding a gondola with their favorite characters on the side. And there you have it, the most important Disney World tips that you've probably never heard of. As Disney World continues its updates and releases, there'll be even more new and important tips to be shared. So keep checking back in with us for future Disney World planning advice to help you navigate all the exciting things happening on property. And as always, don't forget to check out that link in our description for our newsletter. We send out so much information almost every day so you stay up to date on what's going on in Walt Disney World and you won't be caught off guard by anything. Thanks for listening, everyone, and thanks for watching. As always, this is AJ for Disney Food Blog, and we'll see you real soon.